guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha. I am your host and this is another episode of Fish Fan Friday where I give you updates on how my fish are doing and we're kind of starting off with looking at the uh, juveniles that I have jarred. These are the koi. Oh, my camera's stuck. There we go. The koi babies. Well, not babies anymore, but the koi juveniles that I have bred myself. And I'm keeping them in these jars uh, temporarily until they grow out. So I recently did a little swapping. I took out um, Arnold, who I decided will definitely be a keeper. And then I put in here another male that will be going to someone that's going to breed him. So he's enjoying the uh, larger jar. And then in that Betta's place, I put another koi that I have that you guys haven't really seen yet. That was in the cups that I was letting grow out separately. So this koi is really lovely because he or she has a lot of red. And I really, really like it. I really prefer if they have more red. They're, they're, he does have some blacks. I think it's a he. But it's a very lovely fish. Let me move back a little bit. As you can see. There we go. So definitely enjoying being able to see uh, this guy grow out in the jar. Now, the juveniles have reached five months as of yesterday. Yesterday was their five month birthday. And this is the point where I'm going to have to start selling them um, very soon. I've been kind of holding off. I've been taking my time because this is my first group and I, I do want to see how they grow out a little bit as I choose which ones to keep. as. I'm not really good at distinguishing uh, which are good keepers to continue uh, breeding with. So I'm definitely taking my sweet time, but the time is coming soon and it's hard. It's hard to part ways with some of these guys because they're so beautiful and so cute and it's hard for me to have to decide who do I keep because I can't really keep a lot. I was considering this one being a keeper, even though this one's not koi, because I really like this one, as well as that one over there next to it. These two are definitely my favorites, but I'm holding off a tiny bit to let them kind of grow out a bit and uh, figure out which would be ideal. Another nice one that I have, I think, is this one right here. I like the black on the cellophane. And of course we have Mr. Bubbles just napping over there. But definitely some very interesting patterns. I like how this one has the dark eyes. I do have a tendency to prefer the, the dark eyed babies. That one's really cute too. Now I do know for sure that without a doubt, these guys in the back will probably be the first ones to be sold. Um, as I don't really plan on keeping cellophanes or much of the dark ones uh, for breeding purposes. But these cellophanes are beautiful. There's a cellophane with a little bit of uh, dark on the base. But they're still very lovely and they do have some different colors on them. Let me zoom in a little bit. They're very pretty fish, and they can marble and become koi as they age. And they're also very inquisitive and curious. I love the little pink on their cheeks. And they do have some iridescence and a little bit of blue on their tails. I do have another one right here that's starting to show a little color in the tail. Do you see the little black? and then a little bit on the dorsal fin, so even though they're mostly white, they're still very interesting. So the cellophanes, I think, would make some of you guys very happy if 
you if you want them to be your bettas. And they're very spunky. Look how spunky they are. I'm assuming these are all males, but I just want to be 100% sure. It's hard with plaquettes because plaquette uh, bettas are short finned, so it's it's not super easy for me. And I just fed them, so they still have food down here that they're taking their time to eat. So you get to see this one do a little munching. Oh, this one's out. This is the other one I was considering keeping, and you guys said I should keep. This is the one with the dark eye and the light eye. It's got a lot of red. The downside is uh, there's a lot of blue in the fins, and that's not um, that's not something particularly I would want in my koi line. So I'm a little torn as to whether or not I should keep this guy. Let me move the light over and shine it so you can see a little better. So this is that koi. It's still a very lovely fish. That's for sure. Just don't really, wouldn't really want the blue. The iridescent blues, they're really beautiful, and if that's a thing you want to breed for, um, that's still fine, but for me, I would like to try to go for a more true koi. So let me move the lights over, and then move them here. Sorry, the cables are in the way. So then I also have this really large male, which I'm definitely selling. I really like this one. He's very handsome, but I think that he would definitely make someone really, really happy, especially because he's really pretty, and his fins are finally starting to grow longer. And then this one is very confusing because this one has shown breeding stripes. It's more, you know, eggy, has an egg spot, but has been building a humongous bubble nest before I did the water change today, so... To me, I think that's a confused female, probably. That's what it seems like. So this is one of the few that I, I females, I think, I'm pretty sure are females. I'm pretty sure this one's female. I'm also pretty sure this one's female as well. As you can see, the egg spot is super prominent on that one. Same body type as well, kind of round and kind of starting to really show off the traits that would fit a female and then this one in my I believe is a female as well you can't really see that one because the light's not really there much they're all pretty much the same color they are a little bit on the more aggressive side so I don't necessarily know if these girls would be good for a sorority or not because as you can see, yeah, they have a lot of attitude. She's telling that male what she thinks. But if anyone likes the form and thinks they would be nice for breeding or thinks that they would be nice for a single female tank, I think these would do well. I mean, maybe if you acclimate, you could get these for a sorority, but they are, they are kind of, these three are very sassy. That's why I jarred them. So that's kind of what's been going on with all of the jars. As much as I want to keep all of these, I do have to make room for some of the medium sized ones that are growing out uh, that I'm gonna have to move from the cups to the jars. So definitely stay tuned, keep paying attention to my videos as well as my Patreon. I will be announcing on my Patreon first when the first couple fish will go on sale and when my website goes live and then I will also make a video about it as well so you guys will get to uh, know when that's gonna happen I'm only gonna do a few fish at a time because I still want to let a couple grow out because I want to see what's gonna happen with them and then also, I because it's hotter right now since it is July, 
I don't want to ship too many fish at once and have to worry about heat and stuff. It's just going to be a lot easier for myself as a beginner to only uh, do a few at a time pretty much. So I don't get overwhelmed. Uh, so I can communicate with the buyers to make sure that the temperature is not going to be too hot where they're going to be shipped so that they don't have to struggle. Oh, that one's flaring. So that's kind of the goal. Plus I also like docu continuing to document their growth. I'm definitely enjoying uh, seeing them grow up. I, I really love their iridescence on this one's cheeks. Very cute. I also figure I have to figure out which of these koi are they all males or, or, or any of those females. I'm assuming that all of these are boys. But I just want to make sure by kind of keeping them a little bit. I think that's probably why most breeders keep them till six months. I think they have been really growing their fins the past two weeks. So I think when they hit six months, these guys will definitely be very obvious uh, which one's male, which one's female. So that's going to be the goal soon to just kind of figure it out and kind of observe how they change. But I do have to also part ways with them. It makes me so sad, it's so hard. Um, I, maybe it's easier for some people, but I'm getting attached to these guys and I kind of really want to keep all of them. But that would be crazy because I have to do water changes on these guys every day. And I hate doing water changes on these jars every day. It drives me nuts because it takes me like 30 minutes to like to an hour especially when I, so I every few days I wash all the jars too to make sure that they're really clean so it takes forever it's just a pain in the butt but I have to maintain their water quality so I'm starting to think that might maybe be a female just because from the side you can see the body is a little rounder maybe you're a girl yeah hmm that could be that could be the case. If any of you guys have suggestions towards which are male, which are female, I know it's hard to tell, especially because these jars really distort the fish. Uh, do let me know. And I need to start labeling all these jars with numbers and sticky notes to officially start to number which babies are which. So I can document the kind of offspring that my two fish had. That's another thing I wanted to do. And another reason why I'm taking my time only breeding uh, one spawn at a time is because I actually wanted to document on my website, uh, take pictures and have all of the fry, the offspring that the parents have. I also have photos of the parents as before they marbled and as they changed so you can kind of see how um, what kind of offspring they produced so that way if I continue my line we can kind of see the changes and as they progress over time it'll be something very interesting and then Mr. Bubbles Mr. Bubbles is relaxing he just ate and then after he eats he just lays there and just sometimes swims up take a breath he's been kind of moving around a little more I think he likes his container a lot better. He's been a little more active. He tries to swim to the best of his ability, but he has a hard time, but he still tries his best. So that's kind of what he's doing. And let me show you Arnold, the first beta that I decided I will keep for my spawn. So I actually put Arnold in here temporarily. The other red black cat male is in there. And the reason for that is, at least here, since there's a filter and it's heated, I don't have to worry about changing the water so much. And here he has a bit of room, and I could see him a little better. And for the first time, I can really kind of see his form and see him pretty well without having to worry about um, the refraction and distortion from the jars. So he does have some blue in his tail which is not ideal but it's pretty minimal and as you can see his fins have been growing 
really well. He definitely has the longest fins out of all the juveniles at the moment. So that's it's pretty awesome. He's, he's doing really well. He's going to be in here for a very short period of time. I am waiting for the dollar per gallon sale, which is starting in Petco uh, tomorrow. And I want to get a 20 gallon. I got some dividers from Life with Pets on her 4th of July sale. And I'm going to be pretty much putting all of my males in one uh, 20 gallon divided tank with dividers so I can keep all my males together. And so I can kind of figure out what I want to do with this tank again. Do I want to use it for breeding? Do I want to turn this into a shrimp tank? Um, do I want to, I don't know, well at least it'll free it up. I just don't know where I want to put, where I can't even put my 20 gallon. So we'll see. But that's kind of what's been going on right here. I'll also show you the the juveniles that are in the cups. What I did is I did put a few in clear cups just so they can see each other a little better. And I did recently take all of them out and took all the cups out and added another set of holes. This will um, give a better flow and better water circulation, but it also kind of lets them see each other. I did notice that they were getting a little depressed because they couldn't really see other fish and they couldn't really flare at each other. And that was really concerning for me. So what I did is after adding those holes and adding a few fish in clear containers so I can see them out of the holes, I've noticed that they started building bubble nests and they started to be more active and they seem to be a lot happier now. So now that they have some mental stimulation and can kind of observe each other and look at each other and flare each other a little bit, I think this has improved uh, their quality of life in here. So they're definitely the next ones that are gonna be jarred and the next ones that are gonna be sold after I sell the first set. And then here are my little runts. These are the smallest ones. I do have some koi in here, so if you if the first koi sets that I sell um, sell out and you really really want a koi then don't worry. Well first of all if you get any of the dark or cellophanes they could actually turn koi because marbles can turn any color really so you never know. But then I'm also going to be selling some koi from here. In here are mostly females and then I think I have a few males left. I know that the dark one that's right there, that's a male for sure. And that one has been getting kind of bossy and I'm going to have to jar him very soon. But he's been kind of manageable. In a sense that he chases people around but he hasn't really nipped anyone much. So that's why I've allowed him to stay in here. But yeah, he's, he's kind of enjoying the log. The log is his territory, he's been guarding the log. So it's his log now. And he was actually one of my favorites. My down, the, my concern with him is, because I was going to keep him, is the fact that uh, he's marbling a little too fast for me, too fast than I would like. I, I prefer uh, to add fish into my line that marble a lot slower if possible, so that's the one downside, but he is really cute. Now he's hanging on his log so you don't see him. going to be jarring, oh, there he is again. I'm going to be jarring him. Probably this week or next week. Just wanted to let him grow out a little bit. But then I also have a little, a lot of tiny runts. I have a couple that are really concerning me. These guys on the bottom, they have really long thin bodies. I've been feeding them rapashi gel food. So they have been eating. I think that's one of my red eyed down there. And, but they just kind of sit at the bottom. Like they can swim up. I've seen them physically swim up, but they don't want to. They just make the choice to stay at the bottom. And they're definitely, they could be culls, but I think because they can actually eat, um, I think I could still probably sell them and just sell them at a discounted price, possibly. We'll see. I want to like let them grow out some more. Maybe they'll do a little better when they grow out. But yeah, they're, they're just really odd. Little odd babies. So that's kind of the update on the fish over here. They're a little aggressive, but it's not too bad. A lot of the ones that are left over here are the less aggressive ones. So in my opinion, these would be better for uh, sorority tanks, some of the females that are in here. 
all these guys being so sassy in there. Yeah, probably gonna jar him this week. We're gonna let him enjoy this log, guarding this little log for a few more days. He's getting attitude. But yeah, that's kind of it for my update for Fish Fan Friday. Really happy to be seeing all these guys grow out so fast. Just gotta let these little guys catch up. Uh, these smaller guys, I'm theorizing, might be ready to be sold at probably seven months, I'm assuming. I think they need that two more months, just so I can kind of grow up a little bigger. I'm gonna feed them a lot of high fat, high protein foods uh, to hopefully let them catch up. And I think I'm gonna pick up on my uh, water changes. I used to do daily water changes and then I switched it to every few days um, and I think I should put it back to uh, every day if possible because I think it's going to help speed up their growth. I kind of slacked off here and I think that's why they're kind of being smaller now. So that's it for Fish Fan Friday. I hope that you enjoyed this update. Uh, next week I will be pet sitting a new dog which is, the breed is Jindo, her name is Kona, and uh, I think I might, once I finish the last vlog from our trip, because I have one more to go, I'm going to go back to normal vlogs on the vlog channel, and I think I'll vlog a bit about Kona, because I think some of you guys would enjoy uh, seeing her. I am also going to be organizing this fish room with my cousin, because she is starting a business where she's going to be doing, um, organizing for people in their houses so she's gonna come here and help me organize my fish room and kind of make sense of this chaos because this is not cute to look at like I'm really bad at figuring out where to put things I just stack things and this where my I breed my snails I just stack things and it's just crazy and I really want this to be pretty and organized in a way that makes sense and I need to use my space a bit better so that's kind of this stuff. Oh, I'm tired. So, that's kind of it. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing the updates on the baby bettas, and I hope that you're getting excited for the fact that I'm going to be selling them soon. I can't tell you the exact date because I don't know exactly, but it's going to happen soon. It's like, it's like Game of Thrones. You know, winter was coming for like forever, and then it kept saying winter was coming, and then finally this season is coming, so... Instead, the bettas. The bettas are coming. So, <laughs> on that note, bye guys!